Hello and welcome. My name is Cindy Taylor and I am the founder of the Binet Network. I am on a mission to help connect people with experts for their health, wealth, and happiness. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by Natalie Bonifay, who is the founder of a gentler parting LLC and a women's health advocate. I am grateful for our partnership because I think she brings a dynamic to our network about bringing awareness to some of life's most difficult conversations. Um, that includes living well, aging well, and dying well. Some may wonder what that means, and I can't explain it as well as she can. So I will turn it over to Natalie. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your mission. And I will turn it over to you so you can share a little bit more with the audience about who you are, what you do, and how you serve your clients. So I'll let you take it away. Cindy, thank you so much for having me um, as a guest today to the Benny Network. I think it's a fantastic idea. And um, working together um, with all sorts of professionals toward the same goal is, I'm thrilled. Thank so, you. Thank you. Um, so what do I do? You know, it's, uh, um, it's kind of uh, unconventional. I've always done things a bit unconventionally, but you know, this is the perfect time uh, for, for doing this. So basically uh, I offer uh, different sort of services toward those goals. Uh, basically offer individualized uh, education, okay. uh, coaching and advocacy when it comes to life-threatening conditions and aging and end of life. That looks a little bit scary, but what I do is I really help um, with the, um, I advocate for very personal choices, autonomy. And what I like the most here is the, um, the self-determination. Uh, and that is, although I am a scientist in a non-medical capacity. So this is a little twist compared to, you know, what we see. Um, so uh, people come to me at different times. Okay. Uh, so sometimes uh, when sometime, when someone is diagnosed with uh, a, a life threatening condition, it could be cancer, it could be, you know, dementia, it could be all sorts of, of uh, uh, diseases. Um, I come in and I work with the individual and the family to make sure that they understand their options, um, that th they understand the whole picture and, and the entire situation and who they're going to work with and how they're going to cope with the different changes. Mm -hmm. So think, think uh, postpartum doula. Okay. When you think, you know, doula, a lot of women have now have, you know, this uh, have had the, the support of other women called doula at birth and also in postpartum. So particularly postpartum is like the, the, the event is having a child that is changing your life and uh, that creates all sorts of, you know, little wrinkles. It's Great. a wonderful thing, but it's, you know, things we need to adapt to. So that's... Okay. So think, think like that, that way. And so I can work with the individual and the family and the partners um, uh, looking at, you know, physical comfort, uh, care team, uh, the emotional, the, the, the spiritual, and the intellectual too. I mean, when we come, uh, uh, when we're faced with a life-threatening condition, you know, there's a lot of emotional, right. not just the medical part, emotional, the spiritual, where am I going? Uh, what am I leaving? Uh, so I fill the gaps in care uh, at all these levels. Okay. Um, now, I can also serve, um, in, in some cases, I have served as a surrogate daughter. Okay. A lot of women, a lot of women, we don't think of it, a lot of men as well, but a lot of people do not have children. Right. It's like one in five women, for instance doesn't have children. Okay, so you can advocate on their behalf? 
Absolutely. But I like to do it. So I do not do medical per se. Mm -hmm. I can serve as a healthcare representative in such cases, which I've done. Uh, but I really like to work around um, with the power of attorney, with uh, an attorney, with the, 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 the physician uh, of the patient. So I'm not involved with the financial aspects of things nor the medical, but as the advocate, very much like a surrogate daughter. Right. In between all of the other very important roles is where you step in and like you said, fill the gaps. And so somebody would come for your services that would say, let's say just received, um, like you said, a life altering diagnosis. They've got cancer or their spouse has cancer, then you would step in and kind of guide them with resources um, from that point. And then really the areas we don't like to focus on are, are being with them through the end. Can you share with us just a little bit more? Because I know in my experience that the conversation around death is not one that is had often, and it is your mission to help bring awareness to this conversation so that people can plan in advance. Would you speak to that? Absolutely. So, you know, everyone is, every situation, everyone is different. So every situation is going to be different. So when I start working with somebody, you know, at the time of diagnosis, think, you know, like the, the, the postpartum doula, um, or somebody who's going to work um, very early on through the entire pro process, um, I get to guide from the very beginning. So people can call me at the very end. Okay. Uh, it's generally more productive to work from, you know, for a long period of time. So we get to know each other, to understand, and I can, I can help the people, for instance, do finalize their uh, healthcare uh, direct direct um, uh, advanced directives. So this is what I call um, advanced care planning, which I okay. also do separately. People don't have to be sick for that. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, uh, so those conversations, uh, this is not just, when we talk about uh, advanced care planning, um, this is not just a, feel, a piece of paper that we fill out. This is not like who is going to take care of your body, who is going, who is your power of attorney, and how do you want to die? Just you want to give your audience or right. not. This is very important, but what I really do is take people through that process. You know, most people do not want to do it because they are afraid of the term death. So this I take them through through the process of you know planning and, and projecting themselves as what they've done in their life, what they'd like to, you know, finish. And, and sometimes, you know, people get better and right. they get longer to live. And, and, and that's right. the beauty of that. That's why I like to meet people at the very beginning because I can right. help them live better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the advanced care planning is, is really making decisions uh, about the healthcare and everything else that comes with it um, if um, you would uh, and what you would want to do if you are facing a medical uh, crisis and this is the first step of finding clarity that's why I, I, I offer this also separately to anyone who wants to start the process and some of my clients are very young and not sick so right. I start getting people now in their 40s Right. Um, uh, so you have the millennials who are like, uh, I'd like to be able to do that because, you know, I just lost my mom. Right. And uh, there are things that I would like to do differently for my children, mm -hmm. for the next generations to avoid uh, or to kind of minimize and engage more. And, and that is new. That I was going to say that's probably the objective in your role is to catch as many people on the front end planning. And I think why the work that you're doing speaks and resonates so well um, with me is that when I was in the advising role, I think it was one out of 10 people actually had their wills and estate plan done and done correctly. Um, and like you said, it's 
the most times people don't take action, it's because it's the fear and they don't know how to how to do it or where to turn to, who to trust. And so for me, when you're explaining your services, it's almost seems like you are the person and the guide um, helping through that piece of paper, being a, that emotional support and guide through that way. So it's just a piece of paper really, but the, the questions asked and the process of it is extremely emotional. And I think that if more people had a guide to walk them through it and knew about your services, I think more people would, like you said, the millennials say, it's nothing that we need to be nervous of. I, I think I was in my thirties when I first had my estate plan, my husband thought I was crazy. Um, but I thought, Same here. why, yeah. why not? Because then at least I don't have to worry when I go to bed at night, everything is taken, God forbid. Right. Uh, but at least everything I know, I can have peace at night when I lie my head down. And so thank you for, for bringing that important conversation up. If I may add, uh, you know, the, when, when we talk about advanced care planning, uh, you know, there are hospitals who can do that. You know, go, we go into surgery, the hospital asks you, you know, who is the person who is going to talk uh, for you on your behalf in case you can't talk for yourself. And uh, so, you know, simple surgery, you're going to be asked, that's a piece of paper you sign, etc. So, and also when people do their estate planning, which, you know, fair amount of people do that, you know, their, their, their power of attorneys, their, their wills. Now, their attorneys make them also plan for their healthcare directives. And this is um, a little bit more, so I spend more time talking about having those conversations. Right. So it's very complimentary. It's good to have done that with the attorneys. There's no competition there. I don't think, you know, their job or anything, yeah. but I really dive into like, who is going to take those decisions? Right. How do you want to be treated? What, is, what are the different scenarios? What if, you know, you have dementia. Right. What if, you know, you get, you know, I motorcycles. So that's typical examples. Like I'm 54, I get into my motorcycle. I can get into an accident. Do I want to be resuscitated? But is it, it depends. I want somebody who's going to understand. Right. You know, obviously I'd like to live, right? Right. What would be the conditions? I would not want to be on, on, on a right. respirator. I would like to, to stay longer. Right. So that is that. But it's also, let's say, you know, we're really at, toward the end. And how do we want to be treated? Some people like to be touched. Some people like to be left alone. Um, yeah. the, 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 have you made peace with such and such? And it's so much easier to do it in our 30s, yeah. 40s, 50s, 60s than on the deathbed. And Absolutely. this is what's going to determine the, 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 the level of peace and, and serenity and, and sacredness of, right. you know, we live, we, we, we live, we die, we live a legacy. And, and what, right. I, what I'm really working is like, this is the legacy of love. Right. And, and, and we're talking about this very intimate, you know, are we happy with who we are, what we've done, and um, what are we leaving behind? Right. Or what else do we want to do, yeah. right? What, what else do we want to do? We never had anyone, you know, I want to write a book, I want to record this song. Mm -hmm. You know, what, who else is going to, I want to jump off a plane. I, right. I, I, I want this motorcycle ride. See mm -hmm. what I mean? I think when you're having those conversations um, in advance proactively, you're allowing people to recognize from a space of, oh my goodness, this could happen to, wow, I still have a lot that I want to live for and dreams I want to uncover. And so just by you being vulnerable and having those conversations, I think can bring out some of those wishes that one has while they still have time, even if there's not a medical crisis. So absolutely, it's hard though. The brain, there is a shift mm -hmm. in the brain that you know makes us is something a shock generally provokes of course. all of course. sorts of losses. But there is there is room for life, absolutely. and that's what I help. That's what I help bring. You know, when people hear death or end of life or you know cancer or they think it's the end. Um, 
yes and no. Yes right. and no. And that's the and that's really the sacredness and, and what we leave, how we 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 let people feel, which takes me to the next piece I also work on is grief. Okay. So I'm not I'm not a physician, uh, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a therapist. But what I do is I make sure that all these pieces are 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 um covered right okay? so i i'm not there to fix anyone but right. i want to make sure that they do the work and the the thing with grief is you know there is anticipatory grief right. people who are very much angry or, or or sad or you know after a diagnosis or the family anticipating death that you know lots of technicalities lots right. of hospital stays uh, this emotional thing I hold space for. So people have a time to start the process again and be on their road to finishing up the process on their own. Right. I would think, I would argue that people that have been through the situation and actually been through the process with you would, would agree that your role is equally as important as that of the doctor, the advisor, and the attorney. I'm a catalyst. So I make sure that my clients are heard by everyone and they are, they are, they are, their wishes are, are being um, uh, met. met. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, you know, I want to make sure that they express to their attorney what they want. I don't get personally involved in this. I make sure that they find the resources for having all their things uh, right. met. And, and also, um, uh, and I make sure that the communication with the, 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 the physicians and, you know, the nurses and the hospice at times or palliative care, you know, is really that the communication is flowing. Because yes. we know that there are some wrinkles and, right. and it's not always the case, uh, but we are not here to talk about the problems. We're here right. to, you know, um, well, so I want to facilitate Absolutely. And I think that you may know things based on what your experience is and who you work with, that the person going through these scenarios may not know. They may not know what questions to ask. They may not know what to expect. So by having your guidance, you may be able to say, okay, here's what we can expect. Every situation is different, of course, but you might want to think through this and that. Um, as you as you prepare and I think sometimes we realize when it's almost too late to say oh I wish I would have known had I known this going into that I wish I would have asked this question I wish I would have known this resource and so I think it's just fantastic that you're there to help either the families or the individuals know what to ask know who to bring in um, and just again be kind of that that guiding light and resource for them through good and bad times. I, I think that's great. And I'm glad that you said also that you help people that don't have children, because I think that's important. And even those that maybe do have children, but that are maybe in the, what they call the sandwich generation, they're trying to raise their own families and don't have the time maybe to advocate as much as they should. Um, I think it's important for them to have this as a resource as well. This is, this is very important because what I'm seeing at end of life, and, and I think this is a little bit what I bring that is also unique, what I've, my work of the five last years as, as an end of life specialist, is I see a lot of the consequences of this, you know, crisis, um, very stressful situations that I get to see. Uh, not with my clients, but people who are not my clients, right. uh, is, you know, when we go, on, when we are on the receiving end of all this stress as a, as a family, as a family member, or as a friend, or as a partner, you know, we have, it affects our health. Right. So there is, you know, the person who is, you know, declining, but it's also the surrounding and right when grief is not well taken care of, it's not well nurtured, um, I see the consequences on the next generations. Absolutely. I see more diseases, I see unresolved issues. And this is something that 
I can help break for the next generations. We can stop that inter intergenerational yes. uh, trauma that we keep carrying from, you know, this is where I think really that's what I see, you know, to, to, to yeah. bring that to, to the next generation and, and finally learn to heal and um, and learn some of the skills yourself, ourselves, yeah. so we can teach them. You know, I, I don't mind teaching them to a person who's going to teach them to right. their children, right? The whole point is to oil the system. Yeah, and well. I think that was going to be one of my next questions is how have you seen or how have you witnessed the work that you're doing with families, because obviously it's difficult to have these conversations, but there be, must be some impact that you feel you're making um, by the work that you're doing um, in just even what you're saying and wow, your work is impacting the future generations and that's big. I think what the magic is, is at the individual level, each person we talk, and, and it's true for the physician it's true for the attorney, it's true for the nurse, it's true for the CNA, for the patient, of course, and the family member. It's everyone, when I work with everyone like that, I make sure that everyone, of course, the center, the patient being at the center, everyone is feel seen, heard, and understood. Right. And it's the looking in the eyes. That's when, when somebody when I look at somebody's eyes and this person looks back at me and feels the, that I see this person as a whole person, as a spiritual, you know, as a spirit, as a, as a body, but as a, as a soul, really, they feel alive. They feel the love. They, they, this is what people want. Right. Yeah. I can do it. And I do it, you know, especially through grief and, and working, you know, with coaching. I managed to do it through Zoom, believe it or right. not. But it's because I have done it in person right. and I do it in person too. And feeling heard, seen changes a person. It, it just does. Absolutely. Well, when they're at that state in their life, that it's just the dignity that they're looking for at the end of, at the end of the day, at the end of life. I think to know that somebody is there listening, hearing, and seeing what matters most, there's nothing greater in, in my opinion. Uh, with, with that, and it's in that regard, it's different from therapy. Sure. Because I don't, I don't try to fix anyone. I mean, therapy is, is very important. Yes. You know, this is not the problem. It's like, if you want to feel human, they want to feel the warmth in whatever is left of their body. They want to feel like it's okay to cry. Right. They want to be witnessed. Right. And that's what has been missing because everybody is so busy. Yes. And even the physicians and the lawyers, you know, can benefit from having me around. Yes. I, would think I mean, I would... they get their job so much easier. Yeah, they've got, they've got a voice speaking for them when they don't, because they don't have the time, right? Like you said, everyone has their role and their role is not to be the compassionate, emotional listening ear. Unfortunately, that's not, they've got to go. They've got to, and it probably get in and out of patients. And you mentioned being able to connect with people on Zoom. And that's the beauty of the technical world that we're living in. And so I know you're located um, on the East Coast, but because of the opportunity that we have with the internet and, and the ability to have the advances we do, you're able to offer almost all of your services virtually. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was in France recently, you know, to visit my family and I was working with a client, you know, on the phone, right? You know, she would be able to call me and I would pick up the phone and we would be able to do some affirmations together, you know, to breathing right. exercises. And she could really, she could really feel me. But we had met, you know, on Zoom where we knew how we looked like right. and the trust had been built. Of course. And this is, I think this is part of the special. Absolutely. Uh, being able to do that virtually on the phone, I mean, it's just amazing what we can do now. Right. And sometimes, like you said, people just need an ear to listen during those moments when they have nobody else to turn to. 
And so I think that's, it's beautiful that you're able to offer those services, not only in what could have been just your office surrounding area, but now throughout the globe, it's very powerful. And if I read correctly, you are the only one in the entire country world that's offering the service. Is that correct? That your specific niche? Uh, I, I think there are a lot of people who are being trained as end of life doulas. So this okay. is the path that I've taken. There is only one of me in the sense that, yeah. you know, I come with 25 years of, of, of very rational biomedical uh, research experience. So working with um, teams of, you know, multidisciplinary teams. So in that regard, so I can pretty much talk to people from any culture, <laughs> any, right. uh, uh, any, any, any um, religious beliefs, um, uh, any um, gender <laughs> boundaries. I have worked, I, I have worked with so many people that has really uh, exposed me to, so and the rational aspect of things, so being able to identify what goes on in different aspects of mm -hmm. you know, the spectrum of the situation and the, the, the empathetic. So I cannot say that I'm the only one, I'm sure there are many more, right. but uh, I am the only one in um, doing it the way I want. I, I, I do, you know, um, right now. Um, and, and, and it's not about, the type of training it's about the, the the training the experience the the the, the, the charisma the the, the, the the personality i i'm not going to be you know necessarily a cup of tea to anyone of but i'm there right and if they feel that the authenticity is speaking to them they can reach out to me if they prefer somebody else i can refer somebody yeah. else um, so yeah, no, this is not totally unique because there are a lot of people are being trained. Now, right. what they do with it, what they do with it in terms of services, yeah. and, uh, it's up to them. Right. Well, I think what makes you unique, I guess, is what I what I feel when having conversations with you is you do bring the science back with the heart and the compassion. And I think that makes all the difference because you can speak to somebody about all of the medical and scientific. Uh, research, scientific research behind end of life, but it's really the compassion and the heart that one can bring uh, into, first of all, these vulnerable conversations. And then secondly, these very difficult times that somebody goes through. So I just, I commend you for doing what you do. It can't be easy when you have to continually talk about this, but I imagine it's very rewarding to be able to make an impact in the lives of your clients. Thank you for seeing me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I am, I'm just grateful, like I said earlier, for our partnership. I, it's my mission to be able to share the voice of our partners and being able to help people find what I believe are the most important professionals for their life. Um, but I'm grateful that, that we have an opportunity to have you on our platform and in our community. I, I know I probably say that all the time, but I truly am appreciative for the work that you're doing in the community. Is there anything else that you'd like to add or end with today? Yeah, one little thing. For people who are a little bit skeptical about, and they are yes. really, fortunately, the people who are a little bit skeptical about, you know, opening up about that conversation, it is very difficult. I would just say one thing. Um, I did not write it, it didn't come up with it, but it's been, you know, in sculptures, it's also been in, done by uh, Elizabeth Kobler-Ross. There are only two sorts of emotions. There is um, love and there is fear. Mm -hmm. So we cannot be in a place of love if there is fear. So if you're fearful about talking about that, know that, you're not just experiencing the, 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 the love, you know, at the level sure. we're talking about. So they cannot live together. Love yes. and fear cannot live together. So that's all I want to see. Just think about, you know, the level of fear, the level of love. And right. if you minimize the fears just a little bit, you get to learn so much more about yeah. what we mean about love. And I think that's an important um 
this quote or um, thing to bring to light because I think that we forget. Sometimes it seems very difficult, but if you really bring it open to say fear can be eradicated by love and the work that you are doing is literally infused by love, um, that will then take the fear out of these very, very important conversations. So I couldn't have said it more beautifully. Thank you for, again, sharing all of the, the years of experience that you've had to bring you to this point, I think is incredible. It allows you to be able to have these conversations um, on the level that you can. It allows you, again, to be able to bring your heart into the conversations. Um, I am very thrilled again to be able to share the work that you're doing in the community because I just I know firsthand in experiencing some things that I've gone through it's truly those conversations that we have with professionals and other advocates that can help ease the pain and the burden of what we go through in life and so thank you again for living out your mission um, but by you doing what you're doing allows me to live my mission and connecting people like yourself to other people who are, I feel, in need of your services. So I will include all of your contact information um, on the bottom of this video. I will share it. And uh, for anyone that would like to have a conversation with Natalie, she is available. I will drop her phone number. She can also be found um, on her website, which is um, a gentler parting LLC. Com. And of course, she is one of our founding partners, so she can also be found on thevinningnetwork.com. I will drop her link to there as well as this video. And again, thank you so much for joining today. I really appreciate all you're doing for our community. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you for being you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you, and I value you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you.